Hello and welcome to Aqua Lifestyle. I'm Glenn and today we're going to cover the HDS Live Units from Lowrance. This is a basic overview of the unit with basic setups. We'll have separate videos for the setup of the fish finder features and functions and the chart plotter features and functions. So watch for those below when they become available. I'll post them in the links down below. So stay tuned and let's check it out. Okay, let's jump right into it. We're going to be looking at the Lowrance HDS Live unit, Lowrance's flagship model. It is available in a 7, 9, 12, and 16 inch display. Today we're going to be looking at the 9 inch unit. Uh, that's the one that they were kind enough to loan to us to check out. So we're going to take a look at that. They are available with or without active imaging 3-in-1 transmount transducers. You can get them either way. Definitely need a transducer. So let's jump in and see what's in the box to begin with. Starting out, you've got your owner's manual, your installation manual, and a little welcome aboard flyer. Uh, you definitely want to read through all that, especially the quick reference guide. Next is a power cord. You've got the multi-pin power cord and you see it's got other wires on the end there and that's to interface it. You've got the unit itself. It's got a nice uh, sun cover on it and if we flip over to the back here you can see all the plugs. Starting all the way on the left is your NEMA 2000 Then these orange ones here are Ethernet connectors, two of them. You've got your power plug, the red one. You've got a transducer plug, the blue one here, and then you have another transducer plug all the way on the right. Up top is your GPS antenna. Now this is your built-in antenna and it is a really good one. Don't really need to add an external antenna to this unit unless you're in a steel pilot house. Uh, if we flip it over and take the cover off you can see your nice glass display with the touch keys on the right. It is a touch screen but you do have tactile controls on the right. You've got two micro SD card slots down at the bottom right and just close the little magnetic door and seals them up nine inches diagonally on the screen. Now this unit you can flush mount or you can bracket mount it. Next in the box is the gimbal mount if you want to bracket mount it. Uh, it's got a nice little bump in the, in the center there that you can have the wires come out of and feed back up into the back of the unit. Next is a package with all your hardware. You've got your fuse, you've got covers for the plugs that you don't use, mounting hardware, screws, that kind of stuff, uh, all in this package. Next is the transducer. If you did uh, order it with a all-in-one transducer, that's your actual transducer there with the cord and the multi-pin plug. That plugs into that black connector on the back that we saw. About a 25 foot cable on that one. Extensions are available for it if you need extensions, 10 foot extensions. Next is the mounting hardware and the uh, nuts and bolts for the really nice heavy duty stainless steel bracket that comes with that transducer. And uh, it's a big transducer, so it's nice to have that stainless steel bracket rather than a plastic one. Next in the package is um, active imaging instructions for the transducer on how to mount it, how to wire it. You've got a template if you're going to flush mount the unit. You've got a nice template for cutouts on that. Very explanatory, self-explanatory. And then if you are flush mounting it, you've got a gasket for the back of the unit too, which is real nice. All right, on to the display itself. Now, the first time out of the box when you power it up, it's going to ask you a couple of things when you first power up. Self-explanatory, you kind of answer it and set uh, some basic features. Once you've done that, you're going to come to this home screen. Uh, where you have all these icons. Then you're going to want to go to that cog up in the upper left hand corner and press that. And that's going to get into settings for your system, features, services, charts, sonar, all of that. We want to set up the system first. So we go to boat settings. Uh, you're going to set that up and put the dimensions of your boat in there, your boat length, that kind of thing. So you'll set that. Uh, you've got draft, width, height. All the basic stuff and that's for your navigation purposes. Um, you've got text size, um, you've got time, you can set your local time, make the adjustments. It's going to pull the time off the satellite but you can make your adjustments so it's showing local time. 
Next option is a quick access key. Uh, you hit the button once and it takes you to your home screen, that button up there with the little pages on it. The other one you can select from a drop down menu on a long press to pick what you want. Now the larger units will have more options so you can actually pick other things and um, have different long press options and they'll display down at the bottom there. Next on the list is wireless remote settings and that's if you have a wireless remote control and optional wireless remote you can help program and set it up with that. Going on down we've got datums. This is uh, just to confirm you can select datums if you're working off paper charts or getting coordinates from a particular source you want to make sure that the datum and the um, coordinate systems are the same as the charts that you're pulling the information off. Uh, magnetic variation, same thing. So if you're pulling details off a chart, you'll go to this and make sure everything's set to the same as your chart. This screen shows you your satellites, which ones you locked into. You got the barcode down at the bottom showing the signal strength. And then this little circle here, you're actually in the center. And these rings are showing where the satellites are in relation to where you are. The ones near the outer rings are going to be closer to the horizon. The one closer to the cross in the center. Crosshairs in the center, they're right overhead. Uh, handy to see what, how many you're locked into. Um, then you got restore defaults. Uh, if you want to restore and pushing buttons, I want to set everything back to factory default. And your datums and that stuff usually just leave it in the default mode. Um, advanced, this takes you into some advanced settings that you really don't need to get into. I'll show you one feature on these advanced that you might want to program, but uh, initially stay out of that area. It's just going to get too complicated for you. This one, this is one that pops up when you first power the unit up out of the box. It's connect to the uh, Lowrance internet and it helps you set that up. Uh, you can do that at any point in time and very self-explanatory. Then you got an about, tells you your software versions, charts, hardware, uh, software versions, all that kind of stuff in the about. So that is your system setup screen. Going on down, you, next you go features. Um, you can manage features uh, through that button. We'll close out of that. You've got services. Um, if you have services that you're tied in, you can synchronize with that. Navigation. Uh, this gives you some of your navigation information and setups for navigation screen and for your chart plotter. Next is chart. But let's go back just a second in navigation. Down at the bottom here, Phantom Lorraine, you can turn that on or off. If you're putting in older Lorraine coordinates, you can turn that on and then it will allow you to enter Lorraine coordinates and it'll act like a Lorraine uh, as far as the coordinates and the datum uh, to get to particular points off old Lorraine numbers. Actually, once you enter them in, you can actually convert them to uh, TDs that you normally use uh, from TDs to lat longs on your chart plotter. So you can convert them over very well. But that enables you to put them in. On the chart, you've got all kinds of different options um, for setting up your chart. We're going to go into that in detail in a separate video. Same with the next one, Sonar. Uh, we'll go into detail on setting up your Sonar and going into the settings on that in a separate one. Next is Radar, pretty self-explanatory. Autopilot, if you have an autopilot tied in, you can configure and set it up from that. Um, cameras, if you have cameras tied into this, you can uh, set those up. Fuel, uh, depending on the fuel sensors and fuel system, you can coordinate that and set that up. Alarms, you can set alarms such as arrival alarms, deep alarms, that kind of stuff. Units, you can change your units. Wireless enables you to interface with other wireless items. Uh, network, to set up your network if you have several of them tied in together. Um, vessels, you can uh, set up your MMSI and that information. And then you got a simulator mode and that's actually what we're running right now. Now back at the home screen, the icons under the gear cog for the setup, um, such as vessels here, you tap them and it brings up the information uh, for that particular icon. If we go back, you've got other ones like alarms, waypoints, information which will give you tides, that kind of stuff. So you just click those and the information will come up and you can access that. The other icons in the center of the screen here are your main screen icons. So you've got things like your chart plotter, your sonar, side scan, down scan, 3D, uh, whatever other options you have tied in will pull up radar, that kind of stuff. 
Um, and on the right side, you have your split screen favorites, your favorites. So you got split screens and then the little plus sign down at the bottom there, you can add uh, favorites and we'll get to that. Um, as you can see, you've got some pre-programmed in here already, some common split screens, and you can go through those just by tapping them, seeing what they are, um, and then um, hitting the pages button to come back to the home screen. If you hit the little plus, it'll bring up an option there, and then you can just drag in the items that you want. If you look at the top panel there, that's a single, but then if we drag more in, see how it splits, it's a split screen, we can do three. You can actually go up there and select the configuration that you want right from some pre-made templates uh, and then just drag in the items that you want into each of those panels. So it's a real nice custom way to do it. Once you're done and you have what you want, you can click save. You can go through and customize each one, but you just click save and there it is. It's in there and... Um, if you hit the power button here, you have another control called system controls. And this allows you to, if you hit that button, you can actually drag it over and customize the size of each of those panels. So if there's one that you want more pronounced than the other or larger, you can just drag it over and lock it into wherever you want. Now we'll go over the uh, system control when you hit that power button, that menu, we'll go over that later. But you can see the toggle here, you just drag that to wherever you want. And you can customize each of those panels within the uh, multi-screen display there. And uh, once you have what you like, you just lock it in and it'll be there. You'll see it's right there, we just pop it up. And there it is saved to your favorites bar on the right hand side. Um, the edit button, you see you've got a plus and minus there. You can edit, you can go in and edit to them, uh, just whatever you need to, or if you want, you can go back in, uh, pressing that power button, as you can see, adjust the brightness of the screen, um, if you keep pressing it. But uh, if we go back to the home screen, and let's say you want to delete one of these, you can just, uh, you've got the edit button on the left there. You can discard it that way, or you can just hit the X on the right hand side, and there it goes, it's gone. So you can add and delete very easily. So we'll go back in and add another one. You can see it's so simple to do just by dragging in the information that you want on the screen. Hit save, and there it is simple as can be. Here's your information all popping up on your screen as a split screen. Nice and simple. Now another way you can customize is by hitting edit overlay. You click that and you can actually put little data bars, overlay data bars on the screen. I'm going to show you how to do that in one of the later videos so we won't get into that right now. In fact time's getting long and this video is getting long and drawn out and I think it might be best if we have another video pop up here shortly. We'll start with setting up your chart plotter, then we'll have a separate video with the setup of the sonar and your different sonar features and functions. Um, in those videos we'll go over your settings and the overlays. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you know when the other HDS Live videos come up and you can check out how to set up on those videos. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you back here real soon.